Hello, in today's video we will be talking about uh, production. This is a department in the Capsim business simulation. After you, after you are done with the de developing your product and designing in the R&D department, then you go and uh, market them and uh, set their prices in the marketing section. Now uh, is the work of the production department to produce the goods. So. In your page, you'll see we have uh, the production page. I can see, so I have uh, uh, five initial products, which are uh, Abel, Ek, Adam, Aft, and Agape. Then I've introduced uh, two new products, the Ant and Alex, and you'll realize that in our marketing page, we did not make any decisions for the new products because uh, they, they, have, they had been blacked out. So we'll, uh, that uh, will buy capacity for them in uh, this round so that they'll be able to sell in our next round. So we have uh, in the production we, are, we have uh, three primary decisions to make. We have the production schedule, the buy sell capacity and uh, automation rating. And uh, the production schedule, uh, the production just schedules the number of products to be manufactured in the coming year. So we have the, to start us off, we have the unicell forecast. So if you can remember, these are the figures that we had calculated in our marketing department. And uh, this is, uh, if uh, if you don't forecast, the value that will be here will be from the benchmark prediction. So ensure that you are forecasting well because forecasting is the most important part because uh, it will tell you what is your projected uh, number of sales of uh, the units and uh, this uh, the focus is uh, the amount of units that I'm projecting to sell this year so for example in able I'm projecting to sell about uh, 2 million units so 2 2 million 850,000 then in Eka I'm projecting to sell uh, 1.8 then in Adam 1.1 1 .1 .1 million then in Aft 1.5 million then in Agape, I'm projecting to sell uh, 1.2 million units. So these units uh, are in terms of thousands. So the inventory in hand, because in my previous round, I sold out, which was uh, not advisable, because the inventory, this is the amount of units that I could not sell during the previous round. So if you look at mine, I didn't have any inventory. and. Uh, I, it shows that I sold all my units in my previous talk, but the thing about inventory is that you normally pay for inventory. And again, I want to emphasize on, it's okay to have inventory because uh, you'll not lose out on the sales that will be required to sell. And uh, having an inventory of one is okay. And uh, also having an inventory of less than 100 is uh, very good. Having an inventory of between 100 and 200 is uh, still okay because uh, that one can be managed in the next round. But if you have an inventory of between 200 and 300 units, ensure that you are questioning your forecasting because you might have gone wrong with your forecasting method. But if you have an inventory of more than 300, that one might get you into a financial trouble and uh, you might end up uh, getting an emergency loan. Next, you have the production schedule, and uh, this is the amount of units that I want to produce. And uh, with this production schedule, I can't produce more than two times my first shift capacity. Because uh, if you look at this one, in my first shift capacity, I had uh, 1,400. So let me say I want to produce uh, 2,850. You'll realize that it's uh, it will not uh, go very well because I've exceeded my first capacity. So you see that it has been blacked out. So I've exceeded my first capacity. So maybe I could produce uh, 2,800. That is the total of first shift and second shift. And uh, you'll realize that if if you input here value the production after adjustment will be a very different number. So with Ek, let me say I want to produce uh, 1,800 because my first shift is 1,200. 
for Adam uh, is uh, I want to produce uh, 1,100. Sorry, 1,100. Then for aft, I'll produce 1,500. Then for agap, I'll introduce. Uh, I'll produce 1,200. So after making the decision, ensure that. Remember that you again hit the calculate button, so that you will see what will be a production after adjustment. And if you look at my, so this one again, I'll drop it out to 1,400. And uh, ensure that if you look at these uh, values after the production after adjustment value, you'll realize that it's less than what we have uh, we have scheduled to produce because the production after adjustment is the true output of the production line and it normally affected by four factors the first factor is uh, the first sheet capacity because you can't produce more than two times of uh, that shift that's why you know you saw that as i was trying to top up this value for adam able and uh, aft my this value turn up to red again the second factor that will affect your value for the production after adjustment is the complement the complement is the number of workers that uh, you had in that year the third one is the time of the year that the product is introduced into the market if the product is introduced late again you'll have a different value as compared to when it introduced early into the market then we have the account payable because this is the amount that is given to the lenders and um, the, the another thing that you'll know into this schedule is that you cannot build uh, twice than your first shift capacity since there are only two shifts uh, in, in, in your given company so you can't build uh, more than twice the capacity then again stockout will make your customers unhappy and uh, for the new products which uh, you can see i have these new products for these new products the thing is that i can't produce uh, this year because i don't have the capacity so i'll have to buy the capacity so that i can be able to produce into the next year so the second part we have this we have the margins under the margins we have uh, second shift capacity production which is the percent and uh, if uh, if uh, if let's say for for your second shift capacity if for example my first shift capacity is 1400 and uh, i had forecasted i had uh, planned to sell uh, 1400 units or 1400 units i'll not have a second shift capacity because all my goods will be produced in uh, only the first shift capacity and uh, second shift will save you labor dollars because i normally recommend that ensure that your second shift capacity is less than 80 so that when you feel that uh, you are exceeding uh, the 80 just uh, add capacity by buying more capacity and uh, the next we have this labor cost and uh, this is just uh, the cost of labor per unit same with the material cost the ones that we saw in uh, the other departments and uh, they are connected to the research and development and uh, ensure that you aim at minimizing the labor cost and the material cost the labor cost will be reduced by automation and also the investment in total quality management whereas also the material cost will be reduced by investing in the total quality management then you have the total unit cost this one you can see we have uh, this is just the when you add the labor cost and the material cost with the, some uh, other factors you'll get your total unit cost because let's say for example if you choose uh, if you choose uh, this acre you'll see that when you add six dollars and 25 cents to five dollars and 52 cents you'll get eleven dollars and 77 cents then down here we have the contribution margin this is uh, the amounts that you are the value that you get after selling your product and uh, ensure that you 
you are maximizing on your contribution margin so that it's the higher the contribution margin the better then you have the physical plant here the first sheet capacity this is the number of units that can be manufactured in one year using a single eight hour shift so for this product able i am able to produce uh, 1400 units this one i'm able to produce 1200 units and uh, if the sales is uh, let's say 700 and uh, my first shift capacity is 700 there'll be no need for me to get a second shift because we normally pay second shift a 50 percent premium so that they can work on uh, the factory then you have the buy sell capacity so because you can see that i've exceeded let's say buy sell capacity you normally buy and uh, sell capacity so as you can meet your production and uh, it's very expensive when you buy capacity and uh, because you can see that my capacity is exceeding and i want to increase on my production so what i'll basically do here i'll add uh, let's say i buy a capacity of 200 so that i don't uh, overburden my workers then again for this one i'll buy a capacity of 200 then for these new products because i want to them to come I want them to start selling in the, my next round. I'll buy a capacity of 300 because I can't buy more because they are new products I'm introducing to the market. So most customers are aware, are unaware, so they don't know how to do with it. So as it calculates, we have, uh, you'll see that I've introduced a uh, I've bought capacities for these new products so that they'll be able to sell in my next round. So again, if you want, if you have extra capacity and you want to sell capacity, you can just uh, put here a negative number and you'll see, now you can, uh, I, want to, I want to increase my investment. If I want to get some cash, I'll be able to get some cash by selling capacity. But selling and leaving a capacity of one if the product is valuable that one is uh, very advisable and uh, also too much capacity will be will bring harm into your organization then you have the automation rating this is uh, automation is expensive and uh, changes in automation will take a full year to complete then automation will also increase your R&D cycle time. And uh, what you normally do is that you reduce uh, your R&D cycle time by investing in the total quality management. And also, by doing uh, automation, it also increases your R&D cycle time. And uh, for these uh, products, the low end and the traditional uh, product, I normally advise uh, guys to invest to take them to turn as uh, soon as possible so that they may reduce uh, the labor cost so let's invest that to 10 and uh, the main advantage with the uh, Automation is that it saves a lot of money in terms of labor cost. Then you have the new automation rating. This will take a full year to, to start uh, operating. For low-tech products, automate as fast as possible and as best as you can. If you have an automation of 10, that will mean that your plant is fully automated. When you invent a new product, again, invest in automation. And uh, for new products, ensure that your automation is not less than three. So just uh, invest uh, automation in your new products. And uh, it will uh, reduce uh, labor cost. And depending with the strategy or the strategy that you have chosen, do not lower your automation into less than three. If you want to put it into a very low number, just let it be an automation of three. Then down here we have the investment. 
So the investment is affected by automation and capacity because if you invest here, you see that these values uh, went up. The maximum investment, so this is uh, the maximum investment. This one is uh, like a capital budget uh, ceiling because it just gives me the amount that I can be able to spend into this round. Here we have the visualization of the production versus capacity and also the visualization of the price versus unit cost.